What is the best way to change your artist name? I've done multiple videos about this and I've said this before in other videos that I've gotten, when it comes to all the DMs I get about District Kid and releasing music, this is the biggest topic that I get asked about. And I wanna make this video and I suggest watching this entire video, jumping right into it, because there's really two options you have. Option A is you edit your releases, meaning you edit or change your artist name where the releases are already there. To use a very simple analogy I use a lot, let's say you release music under Joe Schmo and you wanna change your artist name to Bob Smith. The first option you have is to have those releases stay live and you edit those releases, or in a sense, basically edit the artist name on those releases. Option B, the second option, is to delete all those releases and re-upload them under a new artist name. Now, I have a video listed below in the description where I talk about the five best ways or the five steps to change your artist name. And for those, of, for those who've, uh, who've watched that video, I mainly prefer and choose and have done option B. Now, this is something that might, this is one of those situations that definitely is a difference of opinion. There's pros and cons to both. Although I gotta say, overall, I choose option B way more. I think you're way better off deleting all the releases and re-uploading them under a new artist name rather than changing, put that in quotation marks, your artist name by editing the releases. And I say this because this is where, again, you might see a very different kind of perspective because on most sites, forums, FAQs, if you're gonna change your artist name on DistroKid, almost all of them, 90% of them say, just edit the release, edit your artist name, and just do it that way. I heavily disagree. I think this is why I've gotten a lot of DMs about this, being like, hey, Mark, I watched your video about changing your artist name. I saw that you said to delete the releases and then re-upload them under the new artist name, but on every other site, it says to just click edit release and edit artist name. And this is, again, something that I, kind of one of those hill I'm willing to die on type situations where with all my experience releasing music and, and helping people out and coaching people and consulting people, trust me when I say the main synopsis of this video, delete the releases and we upload them under a new artist name. I think this is one of those situations that one of my favorite quotes is knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. And I think that yes, although on paper, oh, you just edit the releases that are already live. You type in a different artist name, Joe Schmo, let's say to Bob Smith, boom, you're done. But in practicality, things get mixed up. And this happened to one of my friends, I remember, or actually multiple people, excuse me. I remember talking to one of my friends. He's like, you know what, I'm just gonna do the edit release. And I'm like, you know what, I don't think you should do that. Don't edit the releases in terms of editing your artist name on your current existing releases. Just delete them and take them down, re-upload them under a new artist, artist name. And he's like, no, 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 I'll be fine. A month later, he contacts me. He goes, hey, I don't know what to do. Half the streaming services, have my new artist name, the other half still have the old one and they're not changing, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't know, right? And it's one of those situations, and I think this is the thing is that tricky. If now I get into the maybe the nitty gritty, which this could, video could be very long. So I'm, I'm oversimplifying a lot of this. The issue is that every streaming service is a bit different. One, for example, if let's say you change your artist name from Joe Schmo to Bob Smith, it might happen in two days on Spotify but it might happen in a month on YouTube Music. It might happen in three weeks on Deezer, but it might happen in two months on Audio. Again, I'm just making numbers up. I honestly don't know the timeline. It is very tricky, right? It, it takes a while for the metadata, so to speak, that already exists to be readjusted and everything. The second thing is your album artwork. So for example, if you're releasing an album called like, I don't know, album name, whatever, you know, album name by Joe Schmo, and you change your name to Bob Smith, well, that album picture still says Joe Schmo. Now, if you go back in and edit the album artwork and we upload a new piece of artwork, but that also gets really tricky too. For example, YouTube Music might not recreate a whole other auto-generated video with the right album artwork. And now people are like, wait, I wanna listen to the album by Bob Smith, not Joe Schmo. And you're like, no, 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 I was. And this is where things get very, very tricky. That's why I suggest, although it may seem maybe not counterintuitive or not, depending on your stage of process in terms of releasing music, but you're way better off kind of wiping that slate clean. Take down all the releases, like say under Joe Schmo. Remember, in addition, in case you didn't know, I've done videos about this, DistroKid 
has a free vault. Think of it like a free online storage system for every song you've ever released. So let's say you're like, well, I don't want to delete the releases. I don't even know where my WAV files are. My computer crashed. No big deal. They're located in the district vault. Maybe download them to your computer. You have all your files right there. Now, delete, let's say that album. Delete all your releases under Joe Schmell. Then maybe go back. You may have to manually do this, right? To change each album artwork to say Bob Smith as opposed to Joe Schmell. And then re-upload them as a completely new artist. That is a way better way to wipe the slate clean, start off on a fresh foot. Now, you may be wondering, which is a very common question, what about my streams? What about all my analytics? Do they carry over? And I think that is a big thing I want to bring up for this video, because I think a lot of people think like, well, you know, I, if I, if I edit the release and I edit the, the artist's name, I still have those 10,000 streams that exist on my song, for example. Things can get tricky. I'm going to say that across the board. This gets very, very tricky, right? So, of course, this goes without saying, make sure you really consider your artist's name before releasing music in general, right? But I think we're probably past that point if you're watching this video. Here's the thing, and it gets tricky. It depends upon the platform. For me, I've, I used to have multiple artist projects. Now I actually just have one. That's a whole other story in itself. But I've changed my artist name technically two times under different projects. Every single time I've deleted the releases and re-uploaded them under the new artist name, all the analytics actually carried over. Now, it does depend upon the platform. On Spotify, for example, I remember one day I uh, was releasing music under this one artist. It's kind of funny. I was re releasing music under this one artist for a while. And then I changed the artist's name. And I was like, you know what? I just don't think this artist's name is working for a bunch of different reasons. I'm going to change the artist's name. I released a huge album under that new artist's name. I woke up and uh, on my Spotify analytics, it said, oh, you just got 50,000 streams in the past 24 hours. And I'm like... Okay, I mean, I think my music's doing well, but 50,000 streams on a new artist's name with no promotion. Like, hmm, something isn't adding up. And I went in, and it turns out Spotify took all the past analytics from my previous artist's name and carried them all over. So a song that I just released actually now has 3,000 streams. So that's right, it seemed like 50,000. I was like, I think 50,000 is a bit high in the past 24 hours for an artist's name I just created and then that's the main reason why, right? So Spotify carried those streams over. YouTube Music, just to use another example, because their auto-generated videos deleted the auto-generated videos under my previous artist's name, created new ones. So in a sense, on YouTube Music, I lost all the views and then gained them, or started to gain them back, or not really, but had to start from scratch because it deleted the videos, we uploaded or uploaded new ones, and I'm starting at zero, right? So I was pretty much starting from scratch in that case. So some platforms do carry over the analytics and the data, other ones don't. And I know this is kind of annoying and it depends platform to platform. For me, Spotify did. I never had an issue with Spotify carrying over all the streams because technically when you release or when you re-release, if I'd say it that way, a song, the metadata is kind of the same. A lot of stores will still scan that song and be like, oh yeah, you know what? This kind of looks familiar. Like this looks familiar. Like this looks familiar. We remember this song. We remember the technical elements of the song. Sometimes even the ISRC is the same. That's happened to me where, let's say, I delete a song, re-upload it under a new artist's name, and the ISRC is still the same. Basically, the code of that song in terms of, like, think of it kind of like similar to, like, a UPC code or similar to, like, a, I don't know, uh, like a street address where even though a house got torn down and put back up, you're like, wait, it's still the same street address. We're just going to keep the same, right? And then maybe not the best analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's the code behind the song. Spotify is very good at that. Other platforms might be or might not or might be in the middle. Maybe this it's the same ISRC, but you start from zero streams or zero views or listens or whatever. It does get tricky, right? And I think this is something you have to be prepared for that no matter what, when you change your artist's name, there's going to be some tricky complications. It's inevitable. The more you try to avoid those, the more you kind of dig yourself, I think, deeper down that rabbit hole, which is not the place you want to be in. So pretty, pretty much to sum this up, for a bunch of different reasons I could ramble on about more just delete your releases and re-upload them yes there are numerous ways to do it I think the biggest two like I said is to edit those current releases in terms of your artist's name and kind of leave them live the option or the second option excuse me is to delete them and with all my experience with all my years of knowledge and coaching people and consulting and all this kind of stuff I've said throughout this video trust me when I say you're way better off just deleting all those releases wiping the slate clean and re-uploading everything as a new artist.